Jordan Dego is consistent. He consistently derails his own seasons. And uh, this is the latest edition of this, this sickening hit on Elijah Hewitt there, the teenager. Uh, I think that is a weak um, act from Jordan Dego. And for a player who has as much talent as he has, I'm really fearful he's wasting his career. He's never been All-Australian. He's never been top three in the best and fairest. He's now 27 years of age. And when things are going so well for him and his team, he finds a way to derail his seasons again. He'll get four for that. means he won't play for five weeks. And uh, as I said, I'm, I'm fearful it is one of the great wastes of a career that we've seen. Has he derailed his season, though? I mean, it's a silly act, and he'll probably get rubbed out for it. But I still think he can play All-Australian this year and be a big part of that premiership for Collingwood. There's no doubt he can be. And he, he did that last year and came back and had an influence in the finals after the issues with Bali previously, issues in New York previously, injuries and, and other issues that he's had. But if you can compare him and players with the amount of talent at the same stage of their career, we're talking about Bontempelli and Dangerfield and these types of players. At that age, 27, they're multiple Australians. They're champions of the game. With the talent that he's got, it's a waste. And Brandy, it, it will derail his season if he doesn't play for five weeks. That's a big chunk of the season. It's they're such giving a five weeks point. now. I, well, they've got to buy in between. Yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah. um, but he's not missing five matches. No, no, so he won't yeah. play for five yeah. weeks. I think it's harsh to say it's a weak act. I, I just, I, yes, I agree with you. He needs to be suspended for mm. significant weeks. Maybe three might cap it in the way I look at it. But I don't know about weak. It was in I, the I moment. See, yeah, I see it similar to, to Tom Stewart's on Dion Prestia. Yeah. I see it very differently. Yeah, but I think in, in the modern landscape now, with as much education as we've had and the issues that players are going through. The ball is gone there. Yeah. He jumps, he does leave the leaves ground. the ground and hits an 18-year-old Again, in that's the in head. slow motion, though. Yeah, that I is know, in but slow he, motion. But did he have a play on the player to be able to tackle him? In that moment, why he is leaving his feet to jump and get him high in a game that doesn't mean that much. Like It's, it's a game that they're easily going to win. I, well, I think it's really poor. I don't think there's any excuses for it. I'm happy for you to, to mount a case for him, but... They'll move on from it quickly. and They'll, they'll do what Geelong did last will, year with yeah. Dangerfield in an injury sense and, and, and give him a pre-season within the season itself and he'll come back, I'd imagine, yeah, better. At least and Tom Stewart was able to go on and uh, yeah, be part of a premiership yeah. side and, and not miss too much. Yeah. But I agree. The only thing about this, it was a split-second mistake he made. At yeah. least his other errors have been through lack of professionalism. But it's just another one. Look, look it's another way that he's found himself to disrupt mm. a... I think you still be illustrated. He's playing that good of football. He'll come back and play that good of football that he'll still make it. The fallout's been pretty significant out west, uh, TJ. This is the back page of the West Australian. Now, this is Greg Clark who came on as the sub for Hewitt. He said it was embarrassing that West Coast didn't fly the flag and remonstrate with Dugowie in that moment. And it's probably hard to argue with that. They, yeah. they, no one really did anything or reacted in any well, significant way. Can I get your thoughts on it? Uh, it's very hard. I've thought about it a bit. In the modern day game, you know, it's very hard. You can't sort of get retribution like you would have liked to in the past, but it's just, I suppose, getting in there and being sensible about it. So showing, making Dugowie fearful whether it's the next big tackle or whether it's at least two or three players grabbing him. Because you were pretty hard on the Bombers last year yeah, for not that's flying right. the flag with Luke yeah, Parker. Yeah, and Dylan Shield. So I think it is a symbolic thing, but it's probably a sign of where the Eagles are at, that when the scoreboard's never going your way, you often go into self-preservation mode, but in hindsight, yeah, Greg's probably right. And you also detected something else from the Eagles camp. Yeah, well, Dom Sheed as well. If we got the audio of what he had to say on this hit on Jordan Ngoi post-match. I heard it was pretty bad and the boys probably didn't respond the way that we should have when, when that happened. But, um, you know, watching it back now, I think he uh, deserves a good month or two on the sidelines. OK, Dom Sheen not pulling any punches there on 6PR. Um, we'll have more, of course, in agenda a little later on, along with some injuries. Yeah, they copped it again, the Eagles. They lost Tom Barris before the game even started, and then Connor West went down uh, during the game, as did Shannon Hearn. More soft tissue there. Elijah Hewitt obviously um, ha had the issue with, the, with Jordan Dugowie. I mean, some people, again, thought the Eagles were OK yesterday, and, and, they, and they were to a point in the second and third quarters, but the, the scoreboard says they, again, lost badly, 63 points it, it was entertaining football, and they did mount some serious challenges. Yeah, but, but this just goes, I think, actually, TJ, to, to the, to the, to the um, explanation of where this club is now at. To, to actually come out of the game and try and get a positive out of a 10-goal loss, mm. that's how far this club has slumped in, in a quite short period of time. It, it once wouldn't have accepted getting some nice, gallant loss out of, out of a 10-goal outcome um, when they were the all-powerful, all-conquering team that they were the for a long time. The only positive out of this year is that they can hopefully get a boy like this or a young man like this who can do things for your football club that changes 
the look of your football club. And that's Nick Dacos. He had 30 disposals and kicked three goals. So he was the halfback flanker last year. As good a first year as you're ever likely to see. Now he's the midfielder in his second year of football who is doing special, special things. It's another three Brownlow votes. So Brownlow will be interesting to see where if he goes back into favouritism again because he probably dropped off a little bit in terms of getting votes. But he was just outstanding. 600 metres gain. Running capacity. What a player. Oh, he's a free. He doesn't have to come off your spot on very often. I'd love to see him go and play that Dugowie role. Yeah. Because uh, we saw it when they were challenging the third quarter. He was the one that went on ball, not for the first time this year. And his possessions front of centre, like we've seen there, who that's drove, where he does maximum damage. Who drove the challenge? The challenge? From West Coast. Oh, well, it was Elliot Yo. Like, he was he was big. I thought the power and his explosiveness was back. This is the best game I've seen him play in ages. Um, I've been quite hard on him. I still don't think he's fit enough. Like, still look at him. I still don't think physically he is fit enough. And he looked out on his feet. But this was awesome. This was the power. And you, you remind, you're reminded by what he was when he was an All-Australian. Uh, just bursting away. So he was the one that got it done. He had 27. He had 16 contested possessions, 7 clearances, a whole heap of inside 50s and really did um, you know turn the game in that third quarter for the Eagles it was awesome